I'm following along with the lessons in the Arduino Student Kit. We're on lesson number three, which is about traffic signals. Now the kit talks about uh, some of the some of the history of the traffic light, which is interesting. And then in the the first activity, it has has you build a just a simple sequence of a traffic signal with the three lights. And then in the second activity. It has you add a button to insert a walk cycle into, into the traffic um, cycle. Um, you know, it, what they do here, it, when, let me show, I'll show you how this works. Um, they have it so when you hold the walk button, it flashes the green light as a pedestrian signal. It's safe for pedestrians to cross. Now, depending on what country you're from, it, it might surprise you that traffic signals work differently in different countries. And in fact, probably the majority of the viewers of this channel are from the United States or India, where traffic signals don't don't work like this. That one over there. And importantly. Let's take this opportunity to consider how modern traffic signals use technology to give equal opportunities for people with disabilities. So let's take a little closer look at, at this code to see how they want us to structure this and then think about some improvements we can make to it. Okay, here's the code. Let me see. Let me let me put that one away for now. Actually, I wanted to show you uh, this this view here. Here's the code that they suggest for this for for both both activities actually. But when time you get done with both activities, you have a code that looks something like this. So basically, in the setup section of the code, you define the pin modes for your output for the lights, the red, yellow, and green lights. And then you define a pin mode for input for the button that's going to start this the walk cycle. Okay, then in the loop section of the code, basically we just go through a loop where we turn on the different sequences of lights with a delay in between. So if the button is pushed, here's where they say, okay, if we read from pin number two and it's low, it means it's not pressed, you're going to do this normal cycle. But if the button is actually being pressed right at this moment, it starts this cycle. And if the button is being held down, it repeats this cycle. So what are some ways we could improve this? What improvements could we make to, to this code? Well, some of the things we could improve is we could use variable names instead of these numbers. So you have these numbers down here. It's, it's harder to change things. If you want to move this to a different pin, you got to change it here and you got to change everywhere that that number occurs. It also is not as quite as clear looking at this. Well, well, I forgot what was pin four about, you know, so we could make that a little clearer by using variables. The other thing I want to talk about is this delay. That's kind of problematic in, in this situation because when we're delaying, the whole world stops. The, the traffic control isn't listening to any buttons being pushed. Nothing's being done. The code is just sitting, waiting for that. The, uh, of course, another, of course, another thing to, to consider, like I said, is in different countries, the green flashing doesn't work. So there's different things we could do depending on what country you, you live in. All right, so let me let me show you my code to show you some potential changes to consider here. Okay, the first thing 
I changed, I used variables. So I've got like the green LED and the yellow. So instead of any place where I'll use number nine, I'll, instead of putting the nine, I'll put the word green LED so you know which, which light that's talking about. Um, I've also added some extra ones for a, a, a walk and a don't walk light. Okay, I'll show you this in a bit here. So we have a little walk light here that right now it's in all the cycles until we push the walk by button it just says don't walk. But anyway that's an, an addition, additional button here. An additional um, well, output. Okay, another thing I'm going to insert is a sound pin. So what that's going to be for is while the walk light is active, for for people that are visually impaired, they need they need to know it's time for them to walk now. So we can make a little chirp signal. You probably notice this at newer walk crosswalks, a little chirp signal that says, "Okay, it's that's time for you to it's safe for you now to walk across the intersection." Okay, let me. Then I've got some other. Uh, then I def define other. Uh, integers for the cycles. Another thing I've, I've introduced here different cycles from 1 through 7. Rather than just a string of things, we're going to make the code more modular with cycles. So we, we could change the order of the cycles or insert other cycles for maybe traffic coming from other directions. And then I use some variables to define the, the time. I don't want to use the word delay, but the, but the time that cycle is going to take. All right, so let's let's look first at delay. Now, what I did, I'm going to scroll way to the bottom. I defined a new function, and I called it listen delay. So it's going to work just like the delay function. You call it the same. So in in your code, up here's one right here. I instead of saying delay the length of the walk end cycle, I say listen delay and, and put the same number there. So I call it the same way, just change the name of the function. So how this is going to work, instead of using the delay function in the Arduino, it's going to use, there's a little function called millis for milliseconds. It like it references an internal clock. Basically says, what time is it? Now, it's not really the time, it's the time since the thing was restarted. But it basically says, what is the time, what really meant to say, what's, what's the time now? And then what I'll do is we'll compute a time 2 is equal to the, the time it is right now plus the delay time that I wanted. So we'll set up a time in the future that we're going to keep running this while loop until millisecond. I when I read, I say I keep checking the time. We come back to the top of the loop and say, is it is it time to stop yet? If not, it would, we do the stuff inside here, and inside we can insert any sensors we want. So right now we have this one sensor that we're we're looking to see if the walk button. Is, is activated. But we could put other sensors there. For Maybe, maybe you've got a, a loop of wires in the road to sense when a car drives over, or maybe there's a camera looking at how many cars are in line, or maybe there's some kind of a sensor that says we have an emergency, there's an ambulance coming, we've got to change the cycles. So here's where we could insert other, other sensors into this thing. All right, the other thing I changed in here is the, the structure of the program. So for every cycle, I call a little a function rather than putting all the digital right, digital right in the code and making it real messy. So for example, when we when we call up the green cycle, we just say call function green cycle, and it. The statements here then define what happens during the green cycle. So the green cycle just says turn the green light on, 
turn the orange walk light on, and turn all the other lights off. And But instead of delaying during that cycle, we're going to call listen delay, which allows now the walk button to be pushed any time while, while we're delaying. And therefore, and so on, I've got, I've got little cycles for each one. So here's the yellow cycle where we turn the yellow light on and the walk light is still on. And then the red cycle where we have the red light and the walk light still turned on. And then up here in our, in our code, in the, in the main loop, basically this is, this is the logic for which cycle comes next. So we use a variable called cycle it's going to be set to 1 through 7 for the different cycles we've got. And if it's equal to 1, okay, we're in the green cycle. Now for a diagnostic, I print out one green to the serial monitor so we can see the code is running and which cycle we're, we're activating right now. Then it calls the function green cycle, which turns on the lights as defined by that function. And then here, we, depending on what sensors have been activated, we define what cycle comes after this one. So after the green cycle comes number two, the yellow cycle. Now the, the one that's different is in the red cycle, we're going to either, so if the button is true, you know, if the, if the button is, is, gonna, is pressed, we're going to go to cycle number four, which starts these walk cycles, or not, we're going to go back to cycle number one. It's interesting, you know, most of the cycles added are for the, for the pedestrian, you know, trying to, trying to be, add safety to the pedestrian. So what we, what we do, the first cycle after the red light says, let's wait a little bit, make sure the traffic is cleared. So we'll give a little extra red light time before we send the, the pedestrians across the street. Then we enter the walk cycle. One thing we check here, we're going to check if the button was, is pressed during this cycle. Like if someone's crossing the street and, and someone's having difficulty carrying their bags or, or with their cane, they, you know, they're taking them longer, a, another person could push the button and it'll give extra time. But, but otherwise, notice when we push the button, it doesn't necessarily change the light cycle immediately. So for example, if 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 somebody pushed the button during cycle one, two, or three, or especially number one and two, nothing happens yet because while the traffic is going with a green light, you can't immediately flash a red light. You got to give them a yellow light first. You got to go through the sequence in the proper order for the you know, to let the correct traffic clear before you can turn on the walk light. So I think you can see how this modular approach modular approach gives us more flexibility. It, it also lets us push the walk button at any time at all, but it doesn't necessarily do anything right away, but it remembers with this um, variable called walk button pressed, it remembers the state. So let me, let me show you how that works here. Oops, bring up. So I have this running, and let me let me turn on my serial monitor so you can see the the diagnostics here. So you can oh, I just cleared it, but so, so now it's yellow, red, goes to green, goes to the yellow, goes to the red, and then it just keeps going through this cycle like a normal traffic light. But let's say if I push the the walk. Then it's going to start these walk cycles. So notice it's chirping, and then doing the walk, the walk fast, it says, okay, hurry up, and then it goes back to green. Now notice another thing. When I push this button, notice the little light came on here. That's kind of for diagnostic purposes. It tells us that we're waiting for the walk cycle. That cycle is pending. So any time I push that button, and if we're, if we're actually in the walk cycle, if I push it again, it hears that button again and says, okay, wait a minute, let's insert another walk cycle. So I have two, two walk cycles in a row here. If someone pushed the button again, well, somebody needs more time. 
So cool. I think that, you know, anyway, that's, that's my attempt to try to put a little more structure here and, and in particularly to be more aware of, of how important this walk cycle is for, for people. This is a big safety issue, you know. They're at a disadvantage to the cars. They get, they get hit. They're going to pay a big penalty. So it's very, it's very important. Safety is very important and particularly adding audible symbols. Oh, notice also, when I push the button immediately, I give a symbol, a signal, so the user knows the button actually did something. I, I notice one of our, our crosswalks that's newer in town here, it actually also has a little red LED on the button that says, okay, you push the button. So it's good to give the user that feedback that, that something actually happened, that the button isn't just fake. Okay, well, anyway, that's my take on some of the things that we could do different about lesson three um, let us know in the comments what other what other ideas you have to to make crosswalks safer <laughs>